And it's, re it's a real honour to be here um, at, the, at this amazing centre. I've been lucky enough to be coming to India for 12 years and that's where I met the training in Rishikesh. Um, after maybe 20 years of seeking, so I'm nearly 50 now. And when I came to the training I was 38. And um, I think like many, well probably everyone on earth really, I was trying to find well-being by analysing my thoughts, emotions and sensations, trying to, trying to make them look a certain way. So in this training we call thoughts, emotions and sensations data. So try, the, the basic drive is to, ha to cultivate positive data and to modify and eradicate negative data. And the, and the way we usually do this is by analysing our experience. So, um, you know, if, we're, if, we, if we have positive data, positive circumstances, then we're doing okay. And if we have negative data, negative circumstances, then we're not doing okay. And we need to change these things. And so this, um, this is the basic approach to human life. And it doesn't work, so that's that's a big problem. Um, you, ca you can't only have positive data, and you can't modify and eradicate your negative data. You, you can to a certain extent, but we all know how inconvenient is your negative data. If it's anything like me, you're walking down the beach in Arundel feeling completely fine. Maybe you catch a reflection of yourself in in a window as you're walking down the beach and instead of that really quite muscular tanned Adonis you just you just see some slouched you know subhuman blob walking down the beach and uh, and then all of a sudden you're very depressed because you're oh, you know this this whole idea of, of myself as being what I would like to be is not there and now I'm referencing my, my experience to something, my physical appearance. And then from that, it might stem, okay, I, this is why I'm unhappy. I need to lose weight, I need to do exercise. Um, and if I do that, then I'll get a girlfriend. Then I'll be really happy. Um, and before you know it, you're just in a relentless train of descriptions. And um, the beauty of this, the, the balanced view training, especially the really the only practice that we we um, share here, as you heard in the talk, is to recognise what we call open intelligence uh, for short moments, and then repeat that whenever you remember. Um, our open intelligence is our capacity to experience. You might have other words for it, and it doesn't really matter what you call it. But the important thing is, is that you're introduced to open intelligence as an experience and not as a philosophy or an intellectual um, concept. So the way we introduce ourselves to the direct experience of open intelligence is just to stop thinking. So you can do that right now, just stop thinking, stop describing. What do you, what do you notice in your experience when you do that? Now, of course, almost immediately a thought or a sensation or a sound will come back. So then just repeat it again. Now, my experience of, of stopping thinking is that I, I do recognize an openness and alertness. It's quite subtle and it's quite hard to pin down. But for me, the description, what's looking through your eyes? What's looking through your eyes? Can you identify that? What's listening to me right now? That is what I, I notice when I stop thinking. Now the important thing to emphasize here is that <clears throat> the practice of short moments is not to stop thinking. We only use that to identify open intelligence. The next thought appears with no effort from you in, of, as and through open intelligence. Now in the beginning it might seem like your thoughts are one thing and open intelligence is another thing. But just simply through practicing that instruction, whenever you remember, what you'll start to recognize is that your, your data, your thoughts, emotions and sensations, they start to become less troubling. They become more open. 
because what you're recognizing is the inseparability the the unity of your thoughts emotions and sensations and open intelligence now this indivisibility is already present this is the nature of reality everything is an indivisible expanse and you've probably heard that in many many trainings and many many books and been to many teachers that say this everything is an indivisible expanse now that's all well and good, but unless that's your ex you, you, you have an experience of that, then it's it's really difficult to even even you know. I am separate. <laughs> it's you know if I hit myself on the leg, I can feel it. You know, yeah, I can feel it. My joints. Um, I appear to be separate, speaking to you. Separate human beings. But from a, from a young age, I was always quite fascinated by um, physics and science. And scientifically, we can prove that everything is a unified expanse with, uh, of basically emptiness. All, all, all matter is comprised of, they don't really know how to label it, you could say light, sound, energy. When they, when, when, when they look at you know, if we were to look at my hand under a very, very powerful microscope, you would see the atomic structure. And then if you were to take a bit, a bit of my hand and put it in the, um, a very, very tiny bit of my hand, like not my finger or something. <laughs> but if, he, if you uh, to put a piece of, tiny piece of flesh in the particle accelerator in, in, in Switzerland and, and deconstruct it, you know, explode it apart, you, you, you would have even smaller particles, quarks, and all of these things and then there's even theories about much much smaller things than this like super strings so the more science looks at what makes the universe it's just an ever receding horizon like a carrot on a stick you know in, a, in I'm sure in a hundred years there'll be things even smaller than super strings but at some point it, it must happen that scientists themselves must recognize that what's looking is part of this indivisible un unity. So you can't have a unified field theory because there's a scientist and his theory or a scientist and her theory. It's just like logically it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> but the great thing is, is that you can experience this, this, this great indivisibility. And this is what the Balanced View training is for. Now that might sound really scary because, you know, who, who wants to experience indivisibility? I mean, maybe you do, but for me, it was always really, really scary. How am I going to be able to make my coffee if I'm indivisible from everything? You know, like, um, it's, it, it's going to be really challenging. It's like how, how every, there isn't anything. There's only just one, there's one thing here. So this highlights the futility of the intellect to be able to grasp the nature of reality. So it's very, very important that we experience it. Now, practically speaking, the introduction to and the gaining confidence in the nature of reality means that you feel more open, more connected, m more, more at peace completely with what you would label thoughts that you find disturbing, that you've maybe tried working on for years and years and years. Um, because what you see with a great laugh and maybe a cheer and maybe a little bit of crying is that your thoughts, emotions and sensations, they have no nature of their own. They do not have any power. They are evidence of indivisibility. They are evidence of perfection, especially the negative. Now, as, as a fun experiment, I, fruit or vegetables is what I usually use, but this, if, if you think of a, a, a lime, a bright green lime, everyone there, just, have, just think of a lime. You've got your nice big lime. Okay, no other fruit is allowed in your mind, just the lime. Lime, 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 lime. Okay, I was going to say, you're the lemons, but that's, um, that's an insult in English, like a lemon is a bit of a rubbish person. <laughs> so I will be the lemon. I will, I will think of the lemon, big, you can't think of the lemon, you're just limes, remember, lime, 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 okay, and your oranges, a nice big orange, okay, oranges, limes, lemon, now, okay, when I say go, 
you can only have your fruit in your mind and nothing else. And let's just see, how, how long is it before something else becomes identifiable in your experience, like a sound or a thought or emotion? Okay, lemons, orange, sorry, limes, oranges, lemon, go. Lemon, 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 lemon. lemon. <laughs> like, I can hold it for about one second. What I had then was my, my, um, my, I was saying lemon, 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 so I could feel my lips. So the sensation of my lips was what came into my um, open intelligence. And what, what you'll start to see is that it's, it's impossible to hold anything in place. So attention, holding attention on, you know, your breath or an object, it's a contrived practice. And, but if you enjoy it and you get benefit from it, there's no reason to stop. So that's fine. You know, you don't have to stop anything. But what you'll start to see is what we are as human beings is open intelligence in which everything flows on by, like a line drawn in water. So anyone still got the lime in their head? Orange? Maybe some of you that practice meditation, you, you may well be able to hold it in place. But you see, the nature of reality, and here in Goa it's so beautifully obvious, and you know, like the dog that came here, the beautiful dog, it was so happy and it was just like, ah, so many friends. But, you know, everyone's like, I love dogs. I, I, I want to make friends with all dogs, most dogs. Um, and uh, they're so spontaneous. You know, the, it was not worried in the slightest at all about anything. It just, you know, it just wanted to sniff everyone and say hello. And so happy and running around and just, you know, everywhere. And, and this morning, I, I, I'm lucky enough to live um, just in that greenhouse there up, up in, the, in the top. And um, every morning, the same little hummingbird has been there. Uh, I've been here for nearly three weeks. Every morning for about 40 minutes, furiously fighting its reflection. It's so cute. It's so small, but it's so, you know, full power. And it's um, every morning, 40 minutes, bang, 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 bang. Now that's quite a good metaphor for what we do as human beings when we try to find well-being by changing our thoughts, emotions and sensations. Bang, 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 banging our head against the wall. You know, just relentlessly going and going and going. When all the while there isn't really anything there. And this is what happens in this training. You start to recognise the futility of the, of the conventional approach, you will never find what you're looking for by rearranging your thoughts, emotions and sensations. What you are looking for is present right now as your thoughts, emotions and sensations. Boom. I need, I need sound effects. Um, and that is so amazing. I had a fantastic dream last night. Okay. Um, the other night, and me and a friend, we were, f we were flying, and it was a lucid dream. I knew I was awake in my dream, and in, in the distance there was the most massive mountain, most beautiful, beautiful, enormous mountain. So huge, waterfalls, beautiful animals everywhere, birds, and we were flying right to the top because there was a cave at the top, and I knew that in that cave it was the most pristine, beautiful mountain I'd ever seen, I was fully lucid in my dream, it was like heaven. And there was a beautiful cave, like with glowing light coming out, and I knew when I, that's the secret, that is the pinnacle of beauty there, that cave. So we flew inside the cave, and um, do you know what was inside? It was a really drab 80s tower block, like Hamilton House, drab grey, uh, beige and grey decorations. <laughs> Everyone was wearing really um, 80s grey and beige suits. Like, like walking into uh, an accounting office or something from the 80s. And it was, it was the most profound experience because the dream was saying that the beauty and perfection, the pinnacle of beauty and perfection is in normal, ordinary, everyday life. And the problem that we have had as human beings is in trying to 
fashion our experience to look a certain way in the future so that we will be okay, we, we just ignore the beauty of the mundane, everyday existence that we've been gifted with wherever we're from. It brings tears to my eyes to think how many decades I spent traveling around trying to find the nature of reality when it's, it's, it's me, it's my thoughts, it's my emotions, it's my job, it's, it's the things I don't like about myself, it's the things I don't like about the world. The perfection is inherent in all of these things. Now, at this moment in time, there's plenty to not like about the world. So the importance of this training cannot be overemphasized. Everything appears in your experience, in your open intelligence, and is fuel for you to relax and acknowledge this innate ground of perfection and openness, everything. So this is what the gift of short moments gives you. You'll see very directly that everything about you in your life is an opportunity for you to recognize open intelligence your thoughts, your emotions, your circumstances, your data is perfect for you to practice short moments and that's the great simplicity of this practice. You either recognize open intelligence and relax for a short moment or you don't. It's so beautiful. In, in the Balance View training we have other supports. So the support system is called the Four Mainstays. So the first mainstay is the practice of recognizing open intelligence for short moments repeated whenever you remember. The second mainstay is the trainer, so we have many trainers who are here to support you and you can access the trainers on um, via the web or in meetings. We have meetings all, all around the world. The training is just incredible. So on the website there's free, free videos, free audio, free books. Uh, everything is there for you um, to listen, watch and read and it will elicit the experience of open intelligence. It will bring about this great openness just simply by listening to talks. Listening to talks, watching videos, reading books. It, you will gain confidence that open intelligence is your basis. That your thoughts, emotions and sensations are indivisible from open intelligence. And then finally we have the community which is people like you and me who just practice. You know, just have the openness just to see what happens. What happens when I practice short moments? What happens if I listen to talks for half an hour a day? And if you do that, I guarantee you will start to touch in with something so beautiful and profound it will take your breath away. And that's just the beginning. So perfection is already here. What you're looking for is already here. And from that basis, you train up in that. It becomes more obvious, more openness, more power, more love, more connection. And whatever you're passionate in, about in life, you'll be more passionate about by recognizing open intelligence and relaxing moment by moment. You know, you might actually really, really start to enjoy some of the things that might be a little like a chore. So for me, My experience was there was a very uh, organic and natural shift from complete self-focus, what I need to be happy, and like I shared at the very beginning, what I believed that to be was um, I need to be thin so I can have more sex, basically. Um, and now I've been led around like a... S okay, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> But I've been led around by my testicles and my stomach for my entire life. And um, when I came to the training, I just saw how contrived all of my behavior was based on these two very compelling um, friends. <laughs> no, three. Three friends. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um... And it was quite something. At the moment, we're involved in a very beautiful training called the Twelve Empowerments, which is a, which is a, um, you could say, the foundation training to really look at your, uh, your lives and just start to see how 
well certainly in my case how contrived my life was based on a very small set of data streams everything referred back to me and what I wanted in life uh, and through a simple examination you start to just loosen up and you start to see that I you know I am open intelligence my desire to have um, certain things in life that I believe will make me happy is not it's not necessary I am already I am already okay I am already completely held in this beautiful embrace of open intelligence it's, it's quite something and very organically and naturally there's a shift that occurs where you you don't reference everything back to what what do I need what can this person give me much more the concern is how can I be of help how can I serve my friends and family um, and that just grows and grows to the point where I really just want to be of service to everyone I meet and that I was not like that before now the first thing I think of really when I when I'm with in a group of people is just to, how can I serve how can I support and it's not that I turn into some crazy evangelist about this training believe me I was in the beginning because I found the answer and I wanted all my friends to come and do this training so I shook them by the the shoulders and I was foaming at the mouth balance view balance view balance view you have to come and it didn't really work it wasn't effective but what was effective was being being an example of the training you don't need to say anything about the training so practically what that means when I'm with my family is is helping in the home making cups of tea cooking mowing the lawn cleaning cars things like this and I've shared this many times but when I when I went to my sisters and um, asked them if I could do anything for them they looked at me like this and after a while they said I haven't got any money I can't lend you any money but now it's all very natural and it's I just it's so beautiful to serve and support our friends and family our colleagues and this is something you can test in your experience so when when you're just wandering around Arundel, how 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 does your recognition of open intelligence firstly affect your own experience but more importantly how does it affect your interaction with other people and for me it was just like uh, day and night I turned from being very argumentative completely driven by my own opinions to just being open and just listening to the fascinating opinions of other people and what they do and their practices and just being genuinely interested in what they have to say it's beautiful I don't need to prove that I'm right and you're wrong or my opinions are better than yours anymore I can't tell you how relaxing it is and so what we're doing in this simple practice by relying on the support is tapping into the universal intelligence now here in Goa the perfection of nature is obvious so like with the beautiful dog what's the you want the name? Peanut. Ah, oh, Peanut. That's the best name ever. We might be getting a dog in the, in the centre in Sweden. Peanut, damn it. Why didn't we think of that? Ah, uh, but Peanut's better though, I think. I, you know, Hindi's a beautiful language, but I like the word Peanut. I like Peanuts as well. Ooh, peanuts. I've completely forgotten what I was saying. Uh, the openness of the universe so um, no, no so the perfection of, of the universe is so evident in animals and nature you know there's no thought there's no blame and judgment when a volcano erupts it's not you know it's not sitting there for like 40 years going I am so angry oh my god and then it explodes everywhere and then afterwards it's not going oh why I'm so sorry so sorry everyone <laughs> I really can't control my anger, it's just terrible, it's like, there's nothing going on, it's perfect. And even something as violent as a volcanic eruption is completely relaxed. Now, the problem we have as human beings is that somehow we've learned to describe our experience as not part of that relaxed perfection. But through this training, that's what you'll recognise, is that your thoughts, emotions and sensations may well seem like a volcano erupting, but it doesn't require any effort from you it's happening by itself thoughts emotions and sensations they appear and they resolve without any effort from you so complete effortlessness so your thoughts and emotions sensations hopes and fears they are part of this display 
You don't need to do anything with them. They will appear and resolve in a completely relaxed way. And so this is what we're doing in this training, is tapping into this complete relaxation. The relaxation and empowerment and love that is the nature of who we are and the nature of everything. It's totally wonderful.